All right, y'all, so this is gonna be a new video that I have. Um, and if you watched the last one, you saw I ripped out the old motor of the car, which is over there. And I have another motor right here, which I was gonna use in the car. Um, but the thing that I decided to I'm going with ultimately is going to be an LS3 for the car, as you'll be able to see right here. Everything with it is good. Um, it's low miles and it has flat top pistons which hints that it's from a Camaro or Corvette, um, which this one actually was from a Camaro fifth gen manual car. And it had super low miles, great cross hatching. Um, and all of that little carbon on the top just literally wiped off with WD-40, which was amazing to me. So whoever had it took really good care of it. There wasn't any like sludge in the oil pan. So they took great care of the motor, which was amazing to me because most of the time you find them they're kind of caked up with sludge so it was a great find for me especially for the price so next here is the cam i'm going to be running on the motor it's an f35 from texas speed um, and that's a pretty much the biggest cam you could run on an ls3 from them without running into piston and valve issues um, so put the cam and everything in there and got the heads bolted down i'm using arp head studs dual springs and ls9 gaskets got a new valley cover on there as well um, but everything is bolted down on the motor this clip here i was able to get the front timing chain on there um, new cam sprocket and new oil pump as well so i'm going to be doing a conversion kit on the car from 24x to 58x so i had to get a special cam gear that enabled me to do that also got new front timing cover, new cam sensor, new gaskets all around the motor. Um, and that's going to help me whenever I'm trying to do the conversion. Also, here as you can kind of see, I was able to clean up the garage a little bit, which was great. Um, also able to get this new toolbox, side note, but um, finally able to work on a motor without having tools everywhere. But motor and everything looks good um it checks out so gonna next be working towards to get it in the car next i was able to get the front timing cover on the motor and the new ls3 pedestals and i was able to get the push rods in the motor i was able to get these new rockers and they're from jegs they have a trunnion built in it um, on the rocker itself and it's not the typical um, trunnion style or like bearing style trunnion kit. It's with a bushing, which I really do like. Usually I use CHE um, bushings on my rockers, but at the time they were pretty much all sold out. Um, and I had no LS3 rockers for the motor at the moment. Um, Cause when I bought the motor, it did not have LS3 rockers at all. So Jegs makes this great um, rocker that already has the trunnions on it and they're brand new so I really did like that um, and they're only I think like 200 bucks or something 250 and that's in my area about what it would cost to do the trunnion kit on LC rocker because they sell about a hundred and hundred bucks to 150 bucks for just the rockers and also another 150 bucks for the trunnion kit so I ended up saving money and getting new rockers and not having to clean them up and go through all that which if you've ever done a trunnion kit on these rockers, you know you have to use a vise or use a press and it takes a long time and it's a pain. So I was able to get everything on the motor, got the rockers um, bolted down and spun over the motor, verified everything. So I decided to leave the valley covers off of the motor um, whenever I'm gonna put it in because the firewall and the um, like cowl clearance um, for the motor whenever it's going in is going to be very tight so that little inch or so that the valve covers stick out um, make it a little bit harder to maneuver the engine and put it back in the car so i was able to get the motor and stuff in the car here in this next clip um, you're able to see i've got paper towels inside of each intake port to make sure nothing falls inside of it um, while that i leave the motor in there or anything so nothing crazy will happen um, but it was a real pain to get the motor and everything in 
it took about three to four hours just to align the torque tube because I didn't show it in the video, but I did end up putting a twin disc um, monster clutch on it, LT1S, and aligning the splines with the torque tube was an absolute nightmare in my garage on my back. But once I got that in, it was a breeze. Um, so yeah. So next here, there's these wires that are trash. Um, whoever had wired up this car before, there was a lot of weird odds and ends that I had to end up going back and rewiring on it, um, which for me, it just was a no brainer and it was a deal breaker to have bad wiring in it. So the next little purchase that I also ended up making on the car was I bought a fast 102 for it, um, kind of more for looks and also because at the moment I couldn't find an LS3 intake. This was the only LS3 intake that I had found on the market. So I also got it for really cheap, um, which was great for me. But I don't think I would have made the purchase if I would have bought it new because to me, you, the LS3 intake picks up pretty much nothing um, in comparison to the fast. So I just mainly did it for looks and because it was just way easier for me to find. Also, you can see I have a 102 millimeter throttle body, which I did end up running into issues later with it. Um, as you can kind of see, the, whenever I try to start it, the car kind of doesn't want to start and it wants to die. And that's because the throttle body refused to work um, because I had LS2 throttle body um, harness on the car, which in theory should work for it. But I actually had to end up repinning the entire harness to make the LS3 style 102 work. Um, also adjust the tune as well. So this next little update um, is I have the Verum and everything on the car, pushed it out the garage and got everything bolted down. Um, the Verum is something else that I wanted to end up doing because the motor is pretty much max effort in a LS3 kind of, not really, but um, still has stock heads and you know, not anything crazy with it. Don't have uh, any valve release cut in the piston. So to me, this is a setup I've always wanted to do. So the Verum was icing on the cake as well as they're a local company for us. They're right here in Houston. So um, the only complaint I had about the Verum was that the power duct tube was like a light blue color and it didn't match the rest of the Verum, which was more of a dark black. Also another reason why I rolled the car out was because I was working on connecting the headers and the exhaust, um, but I ended up finding a Black Widow <laughs> on the exhaust, which uh, was about three inches away from my face when I was working on it. So it was very odd seeing a Black Widow literally inches away from your face. So a uh, little picture of it, but that definitely was a wake up call at 8 a.m. in the morning. You know, definitely didn't need coffee after that. So next thing we're about to do is I'm about to head over to the dyno and get the car dyno tuned. All right, so here are the numbers. Um, we got 498 horsepower out of the car um, and we're running out of fuel pressure, which was an issue that I did not expect because the car had a 355 pump in it. I did end up using a truck throttle body, which is like 80 something millimeters instead of the 102 for this first dyno session um, until that I was able to figure out my throttle body issues a little bit later. But I was able to repin the harness and get the 102 throttle body to work and then decided to head back to the dyno. Also, I decided to end up redoing the fuel system as well and put in a 450 Walbro pump. <laughs>
So thank you guys for watching the video. Um, the next episode will be a little bit more progress in the car. And here's a little hint of what's going to be happening.